Patricia Taylor Allenson was born in 1937. She was adored by her aunts and especially by her grandmother. She was a beautiful child with big green eyes and blondish hair. She was quick and clever and grew up to be a beautiful teenager. Pat was spoiled by her mother, Marguerite, and stepfather, Colonel Clifford Radcliffe. Growing up to be an army brat. She had a younger stepbrother Kent, whom she loved to bully and tease without mercy. There was a darker side to Pat. If she didn't get her way, she would throw a tantrum. If that didn't work, she manipulated her way. Patricia Allenson always thought of herself as special. Her parents took any responsibility away from her and thus Patricia was convinced that a husband had to give her anything she ever dreamed of. Pat married at the very young age of 15. She first had married an army sergeant and stayed with him long enough to have three children, but got tired of him. Soon enough, Pat was living near or with her parents, having her mother help her out with the children, and her husband was often off on his deployments alone. The marriage started falling apart, and in 1971 they divorced. While many young mothers would have been defeated after a failed marriage, not Pat. She had big dreams. All she needed was to find and marry a wealthy man to achieve them. After a couple of relationships that didn't pan out, Pat met Tom Allenson in 1973, a handsome young man from a wealthy Georgia family. His father was prominent Georgia attorney Walter Allenson. Pat cared little that Tom was six years her junior or married with a young child, her only focus was the money and she was determined to tie herself to it. Although she had her eye on someone else, it looked like Tom could give her everything she ever wanted. Unfortunately, Tom was married and in the process of an ugly divorce from a woman known as Little Carolyn. However, the biggest problem for Pat was Tom's parents, Walter and Big Carolyn Allenson. They didn't approve of Pat. They were gravely disappointed in Tom and viewed divorce as not being an option. They sided with Little Carolyn and the relationship between Tom and his family deteriorated. There were accusations flying between both sides along with some pretty dreadful threats. Tom Allenson had money and as soon as he was divorced, he was quite insistent that Pat marry him. In 1974, Tom married her dressed as Red Butler, while she played Scarlet, and gave her a heavily mortgaged 52-acre home in Zebulon, Georgia. They set about to raise Morgan horses, and even Jimmy Carter, then governor of Georgia came to visit. Pat's ambitions of being the proper Southern Belle were being realized or so it seemed. Tom's parents Walter and Carolyn were so disgusted with their son that they had cut him from their lives and their will. Instead, they had made provisions for their grandchild and Tom's first wife in the event of their deaths. Pat was furious. Nobody especially not Tom's parents, were going to stand in her way of getting the money she saw as rightfully hers. It was only two months after their marriage that Patricia talked her husband into a paranoia that his father, Walter Allenson wanted to kill him. Walter Allenson made no secret about being against his daughter-in-law. When a pistol and a rifle were stolen from Walter Allenson's home, his father on the other hand believed that his son planned to kill him. When Walter Allenson, Tom's father, disapproved of her and angrily tried to force Tom out of his life, Pat filed complaints of sexual harassment against him, claiming that he had exposed himself to her. Tom grew alarmed over this, along with threats that he heard that his father was going to kill him, so he took out a restraining order. Yet his father was taking a defensive stand, believing that his own son was out to kill him. Someone had stolen a pistol and rifle from his home and he was convinced it was his son. The police searched Tom's home and came up empty-handed, yet the intense fear and anger continued to grow on both sides. With no form of communication taking place, it was the perfect setup for a manipulative psychopath who wanted to get something for herself. On July 29, 1974, Walter and his wife Carolyn, 
were ambushed. As they took a trip in their car, someone began to shoot at them. They survived the inexplicable attack and felt sure that Tom had orchestrated it, although he was far away on that day. The situation between father and son grew more paranoid until August 3rd. On that day, Tom dropped Pat off at the doctor and then walked over to see his mother when he was sure his father would not be home. Pat had told him that someone had been calling their house all night long and then had just breathed. She felt sure it was Walter, so Tom felt it was time to try to straighten things out. Otherwise, he thought his father might try to shoot him off his horse in the parade that weekend. His mother was not home, although he expected her, so to avoid the possibility of running into Walter, he checked the basement door, found it unlocked, and went to sit inside and wait. To his surprise, Walter came home it was later determined that he'd received a call from an unknown woman telling him that Tom was at his house. He began to rant and rave over Tom's presence. The electricity was off, so he went into the basement to look around, found the switch box tampered with, and then went out to call the police. But the phone line had been cut, so he used a neighbor's phone to get the police out there. They arrived, but Walter said he'd take care of the situation himself, so they left. He then went back into the basement and started shooting randomly. Carolyn was home by that time and he called up to her that he had Tom cornered. He needed the gun he'd just purchased, so she grabbed it to bring it to him. Tom later claimed that he panicked, certain that his father would kill him. He could not imagine how he had gotten into such a situation. When officers arrived once again in response to an emergency call, they found Carolyn Allenson sitting upright on the basement steps, shot dead. Through the basement window, they could see numerous sprays of blood. Not far away inside, Walter lay on the ground. He'd been shot numerous times it was later determined that there were 20 separate entrance wounds. And the police immediately suspected Tom. He'd been seen there, and a man matching his description had run from the crime scene. Tom was soon arrested. When Pat told a number of lies to the attorney in an alleged attempt to provide Tom with an alibi, the situation became even more suspicious. Tom had his own story, also a lie, and it didn't match. He was convicted and sentenced to life in prison. At the time of the murders, he and Pat had been married less than two months, and now Pat had the farm to herself. It wasn't long before she tried to talk Tom into a suicide pact, which he later felt sure was an attempt to get him to die so she would inherit everything. Every chance she got, Pat begged the man she loved to join her in suicide so they would not be separated, ever. Tom considered it, often thought about it, but simply could not bring himself to carry it out. It goes without saying that Pat too did not commit suicide. With Walter and Carolyn gone and their grandson in prison, the elder Allensons were a prime target for a gold-digging murderer. Pat moved the elderly couple into her home and insisted she be their sole care provided. In declining health and no other family nearby to help them, the couple was thankful for Pat's generosity. Soon Pat had convinced the Allensons that she and Tom, despite his status as a prison inmate, should be the sole heirs of the estate and the couple updated their wills in which they disinherited their daughter Jean Boggs. Living with Pat, Nona's health deteriorated rapidly. Although she had been sickly for some while, she'd never been bedridden as she was during her stay at Pat's farm. Papa was heartbroken. His health was deteriorating, his wife too was in poor health. In a short time he'd lost a son and daughter-in-law and his grandson was in prison. His daughter was angry and not speaking with him, other than to berate Pat, the one person who seemed to care about something more than his money. Jean however, finally broke through. After notifying the authorities of her suspicions, followed by tests which showed Nona and Papa both had arsenic in their systems, and surprise testimony from Pat's daughter Susan, 
claiming she saw her mother put arsenic in the elderly couple's food and drink, Pat finally faced consequences for her actions. She was sentenced to time in prison. Once she got out, she started up again with her scheming. She persuaded a wealthy couple from Atlanta, Mr. and Mrs. James Christ, to hire her as a nurse. It wasn't long before they too, got sick and the husband died. In the meantime, Tom had served 15 and a half years and gotten out on parole. Investigators on the Christ case arranged to see him to find out what had happened the day he had shot his parents. It was their belief that Pat had not only choreographed the entire episode by fanning the flames of paranoia between father and son, and then by sending them into a head-on confrontation, but also that she had fully expected Tom to die. The investigators believed Pat had hired someone to ambush Walter and Carolyn and to cut their phone lines, but they couldn't prove anything. Tom's story might solve the riddle. As they spoke with him, a new piece of information came out. After shooting his parents in self-defense, afraid they meant to trap and kill him. He had run to find Pat and she had told him to find his own way home, 60 miles away. He had done so without question. Both of them had denied seeing each other that morning, and even as he protected Pat, it wasn't long before he had wondered if he and his father had both been set up. Tom told the investigators that Pat was a liar. Pat was a headstrong, manipulative type person that would do anything to get what she wanted and you do not know she was doing it. He had given her everything, his money, his power of attorney, his home, and his heart, and she had taken full advantage. The tragedy of his life would never have happened he believed, if he hadn't married Pat. Once again, Pat was facing prison time. In a shrewd and controversial plea bargain, she agreed to seven charges, including theft, attempted murder, and posing as a registered nurse, with the proviso that she never be charged with the murder of Mr. Christ or investigated for the murder of Tom's parents. Once again, she was sentenced to eight years. Patricia Taylor Allenson, the deadly Magnolia, was released from prison in 1999. In February 2008, Patricia Taylor Allenson, age 70, was arrested and charged with doctor shopping for thousands of pain pills over the past year. It is believed she may have received over 3,700 pills in less than a year. Her bond was set at $22,500 for three felony counts of unauthorized distribution. While it seems evident that Pat was among those women who set other people up to kill, some women do the killing and then deflect the blame to others. Pat just can't seem to help herself. She has done nothing but help herself to get everything she ever wanted no matter the cost.